Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. Today I'm going to show you how to put together our servo controller kit. It comes with a servo motor with attachments, six pieces of female to male uh, connector wire, and the DIY kit and components. I'm going to show you how to throw it all together now, and uh, if you look at the link below, there is a video manual that documents uh, how, how it works and the different options you have. So first of all, let's have a look at the components. This is the micro servo. It connects to the board via three female to male wire connectors. The other three male to female wire connectors are used to power the uh, board and servo slash control it using an I.O. port and your Arduino or your PIC. These are the attachments that come with the uh, servo motor. There are three attachments and three screws, so you have a few options. This, of course, is the custom PCB. This is a 1K ohm resistor, a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, 8-pin dip socket, and 8-pin dip microprocessor. We've got two 2-pin header connectors and four 3-pin headers. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solder the single resistor. I'm using the dip IC to hold it up so that you can actually get a better view. Uh, the 1K ohm resistor goes in the R1 slot labeled 1K R1. The resistor has no polarity, you can place it in either way as long as it goes in the R1 slot. So solder that into place, cut the leads on the bottom, make sure that the solder joints are strong and we'll do the capacitors next. The electrolytic capacitor, the 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor has a long lead and a short lead. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. The footprint for this capacitor is labeled C2100U for 100 micro and it is right here. On the, from this perspective there's a top pin or top hole and bottom hole. The top hole has a little plus sign above it. Make sure that you place your long lead in the top hole with the plus sign above it and your short lead in the bottom hole. If you turn that around and you power this up you'll likely pop the capacitor and your circuit will not work properly. The uh, 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor labeled 104 goes in the C1 slot right here. It's, uh, it's also it's labeled 0.1U for 0.1 microfarads C1. And there's no polarity, both leads are the same size. Just plug it, plug it in, solder it in, and make sure that you have nice solid solder joints and that you cut you trim the leads on the bottom of the board. Next we'll do the three pin headers. The four three pin headers go in this slot, this slot, this slot, and this slot. Very easy to solder them into place. However, what I suggest doing is soldering one lead at a time per three pin header. Doing that will ensure that it is standing up straight and uniform and flush to the board. Uh, and once you have it the way you want it, you can solder the other two holes. If you solder uh, all three holes or leads at the same time, it's uh, much easier to uh, have a, a, crooked, uh, a crooked header. You don't want that. So solder one at a time. Uh, very carefully and you'll make, just make sure that they're standing up at 90 degrees. Solder those in place. Lastly, we'll do the socket and the, uh, and the, and the placement of the 8-pin microcontroller. From this perspective, you might notice that there is a notch in the footprint for the, pin, uh, for the PIC-10 microprocessor. Uh, if you look at the socket on the left-hand side, there is a notch as well. From a bird's eye view, line the notch up on the socket with the notch on the board. Make sure it's flush, turn it around and solder it. Like the socket, there is a notch on the left side of the microprocessor. So we're going to line that up from a bird's eye view with a notch on the board and we're going to carefully place the microprocessor in. From there, some housekeeping. We've got two two-pin header connectors. Uh, connect one of them to the topmost pins on the bottom rail here and do the same on the bottom two pins on the top right rail. I've got a three pin female to male wire connector connected to the power supply side of the board. On the left there's uh, the labeling 5 volts in the middle SIG, SIG for signal and rightmost is ground. The color code of your wires might be different than the one I'm using, uh, but if you're going to connect this to an external circuit such as Arduino, connect the 5 volt pin to a regulated 5 volt uh, power supply such as the VCC pin on the Arduino. 
The SIG pin can be connected to the driver control on a, uh, say another platform such as PIC or ARM or even a TTL circuit when driven high that executes the operation. Please see the uh, full video manual linked below and write your ground. So connect the ground pin on this board to the ground on your external circuit such as Arduino. The ground, there's ground pins on the Arduino and you can do so easily with the male wire connectors on the other end. On the opposite side I've got another three pin female to male wire connector. Left pin is 5 volts, middle pin is MTR for motor, right pin is ground. So your servo motor needs three pins to operate. 5 volts, uh, an output signal, and ground. So in this case I've got red for 5 volts, uh, orange for the signal line MTR and yellow for ground. So let's connect that to our servo motor. The servo motor that comes with the kit has three different wires brown, red, and orange. Brown is ground, red is 5 volts, and orange is input signal. So we're going to connect orange to MTR, red to the 5 volt line, and brown to the ground line. Now we can do this by connecting the uh, outputs from the uh, board to the female connector. So let's wire them up. I'm all connected. Let's run a quick test and if you want to know more about the different programs that the board offers, simply check the uh, video manual link below. We're going to power it up with a power supply of 5 volts and we're going to use the positive 5 volts that were from our power supply to act as our input signal to drive the motor. I just threw on one of the servo motor heads. Uh, you, can, you can't get it perfectly on any single ridge but you, you have a, a lot of availability here. So we'll just pop it on anywhere you want. There are three different uh, attachments and uh, you can screw it on for a better for a fastening you know, for, for it to be stronger, but you don't really have to. It's up to you. So I'm going to plug it in. As soon as you apply 5 volts to this, it will glitch the motor, uh, and then uh, it will correct itself. So it glitched and immediately corrected itself. So I'm going to tech connect the SIG line to 5 volts. I'm going to connect uh, another pulse to 5 volts. Another. And another. So again, it works perfectly the first time. If you uh, want to know more about the different programs, simply check the video manual below. Thanks for watching, guys.